Okay, now we got the thing working. This is an M978 tanker, big jet fueler or tank fueler. So uh, this one's come from uh, it's called Oshkosh, Wisconsin. We got their label on the darn thing. So they're probably like a, a either refurbish or brand new. I couldn't tell you. I don't know the status. I'm thinking brand new, but you know that's a lot of money. So. I'm right on the corner, but we'll talk about everything we see here. The tie downs, you know, are going to be right there, and of course you can see the cross chains in the front. You can't always do it depending on the equipment, but when you have an open area where there's no chains that come in contact with the product, that's fine. All I did was stagger one hole. So you can see I've had chain here, but I moved the other chain right there. So all I did was stagger it so it doesn't uh, cause abrasion or any kind of touching. So, and they did a great job of loading. I mean, these guys load this equipment all day long. Uh, no offense to the service folks, but, you know, if they're not experienced to be able to drive onto a trailer and get it within a half inch or an inch of being dead on the money, I understand that because, you know, that's kind of, that shit kind of scary. So, you know, I had a lot of problems with that in the past and, you know, but they, they do the best they can. You know, and I've, it's great. We appreciate their service. So this is brings you down some great new stuff. So you folks can keep defending us and keeping the bad guys from kicking our ass. So now, see that one there was marked tie down as well. But I had to, you can see the angle. I got a tire here. You can see over there. I've got mud flaps. I've got stuff to watch for. Yeah, this sucker's new pretty crazy but uh, even smells like it has that new car smell damn it Jim we could have fun with something like this out in the back 40 everybody said that it's oh my god when we pull that off and we can go have some fun but that's what I did and I just did a loop over this is the single chain thing in the center I used two individual chains in the front and rear but on the middle I did um, single chain two binders that's my old grab the hell with it in there it, they're not going to kill me for it uh, because the aggregate uh, working load limit is fine. I just have to, uh, I only have so much stuff to work with and I do need to get me some short chains, you know, if I'm going to do much more of this. Just go ahead and have them build me um, some short six footers or something like that that are just for vehicle. So now you can see it. Now I in inverted my you can see they're offset. The handle is not in the middle, it's on offset. So I can invert it so I can bring it down here closer for me to crank. This sucker went direct to the deck. It is tight as a drum. There is no problems. <laughs> you don't always have the ability to wrap a chain and go through all that hassle or having a chain pocket, which is right here. See that? So that's cool. So this one here, it's real similar, they're pretty much the same on the other side. I just had to clear all, all the vehicle parts and I wanted to keep it um, good and tight. Now these are pulling this way, those up there pulling that way. So they're neutralizing themselves. The next set could not crisscross, too much business. You see what's going on here? If I'd have went from there to there, I could have been into that in, in a glad hand um, coupling system. I'm not going to go through all that. I mean, we're not going to damage anything. This stuff's new, and that's just the way it is. So, everything looks great. It, uh, I had a breakdown. I uh, had a dozer valve go out, I had a check engine light, it was eating fuel. Well, they had plenty of time on the load, the agent was kept in the loop, and uh, so I was only down for about oh, 30 hours, but it had to stay overnight, the shop was an all-nighter, not an all-nighter shop, so the problem was is that getting the parts, it was all the little, little tiny lines that go into the dozer valve, which is part of your smog control, uh, you know, DPF system, not DEF, but DPF, deep particulate filter. It sprays fuel in after the turbo and cleans your flip and filter for you. Well, it was screwing up. 
Well, I started uh, really seeing after all this work was done, excellent fuel mileage, even with 42,000 pounds of vehicle. Now this sucker will bounce uh, a little bit because you know the the springs uh, and the airbag and all that stuff are not compressed, but you're still going to have some you know bounce on on the road and it will affect your steering because it will make you dive a little bit left and right sometimes uh, depending well especially in the camber of the road when it starts tipping rip uh, rocking and rolling uh, you know transitions on uh, construction zones and stuff like that so I just got to watch what you're doing you know just get your speeds down you know the van drivers they can whip, they got home potato chips and pantyhose they can just whip right on around you well just don't pay attention, just drive careful. Look at the other side here. And they had like a section for Bobtail or something on that corner, so I just backed all the way hell up. You see my lines are kind of screwed up there. But that was the barrier because they had it set up for Bobtail parking. And in the night, I had to uh, come in and there was a vehicle on the other side outside of the barrier so I had to angle up that way and then shoot for the and then be able to get my nose around the trailer and then shoot back that you have that's all in the setup you have to do your right setup if you don't set up you're gonna fight it and you could have problems so hell yeah this is really really nice now it's a residual fuel there's less than 10 gallons of it's called well it says fuel oil and it should say on your bills relating um, NA 1993 not UN 1993 because it's just a residual so I'm sure somebody must have bumped a tire up against it or something I don't think they're going to yell at it because everything is in good condition you just have to watch so you know you don't put any pressure on any of the parts Pulling new equipment like this, this stuff is, you know, very expensive, and we're taxpayers. We pay for it, so and we use tax money for this. So you're taking care of basically with something you have a stake in. You know, any time that your tax dollars get allocated to something like this, well, it's, it might only be a penny, but some of that money was yours probably. And you collect that off of 300 million people. There you go. So this is what keeps na our nation free and strongest on earth as far as I'm concerned. Right here is where it's at, man. So we're going down to a base in Alabama. We have no whammies. We're going to see our mammy in Alabama. I know. Well, don't quit your day job. So Should be in good, good shape. And I guess that's it, guys. See you on the road.